We all want more freedom, and a lot of us work hard now in the hope we'll feel free later. What if there was another way? A way to feel happier, more free, and confident to get better results right now. Welcome to Your Freedom Unlimited, where we share practical stories and strategies to help you show up authentically, drop your fears, and take inspired action on what matters most to you. I'm your host, Jen Ramsey. As a coach with a love for metaphysics, science, spirituality, and strategies that get results, I'll help you step away from self-doubt and create a powerful new story for your life, business, or career. Join me. Just before we start this episode, I just wanted to share with you a little trigger warning. In this episode, we do talk a little bit about abuse. So if that's of a concern to you, I wanted to let you know up front. But I also want to let you know that this episode is truly amazing and I really encourage you to listen in. Hi, everyone, and welcome to this week's episode of Your Freedom Unlimited with me, Jen Ramsey. I am so excited you're here, and I'm even more excited to be introducing to you a very dear friend of mine, Alyssa Nathaniel. Alyssa is, is, has been and done many things in her life, but right now, Alyssa is very passionate about working with people and helping them move from frozen to freedom after they've experienced PTSD, trauma, stress, depression, or anxiety. And her own experiences and her own rich history of, uh, as a practitioner of acupuncture, acutonics, neural organization technique, which we'll hear a bit more about later, yoga, working with living with dying and freedom with trauma has, has inspired the work she's doing today. And so Alyssa is now very dedicated to exploring the way that our energy pathways and frequencies that we employ can create a transformation for ourselves, can help us expand our consciousness and help us find true freedom from suffering. So Alyssa is an amazing singer and she's an amazing community builder. So I'm very excited to have you on the show today. Alyssa, welcome. Thanks, Jen. It's so great to be here and I'm really excited also. And I just love you and love what you're doing. So it's a, it's, I feel very privileged and honoured to be here. Oh, well, well we're, it's a privilege to have you sharing your journey with us because, as you know, this podcast is called Your Freedom Unlimited for a mm -hmm. reason. It's all about how do we find freedom in our lives. And I know that you have got an incredible story and an incredible journey to freedom. So mm -hmm. I just wonder if we could wind back the clock a little bit, if you could perhaps share a little bit of your backstory in terms of what brought you to here, to where you are sure. today, and to this space of really beautiful freedom that you find yourself in. Thank you, Jen. I think freedom has always been my journey. You know, when people would always ask, what's your highest value? I'd say freedom and awakening. I knew very young that I wanted awakening. You know, that that was the ultimate freedom, that everything else was just stuff, you know. And so from a very young age, I was deeply connected to the divine. I was totally in love. I remember with singing on, uh, sitting on my swing and singing to the divine and singing to nature and the birds and the flowers and being totally heart-filled, light-filled with ecstasy. The guy next door used to come over and try and listen to me and I go, go away. It's like, just go away. I want to be in this ecstatic, expanded state. And, um, and yeah, so I, and I, had, I came from a very eclectic family I had a deep sense of knowing that I wasn't just this being in this body so it, from a young age I, back then I had jet black hair you know people say where's she from and and I'd, and they'd say is she Native American is she Indian is she uh, Greek or Italian or Spanish or French and the interesting thing about that was I remembered those cultures running through me Mm -hmm. I remembered them. And there were times where I felt like I was morphine. And by three, three or three or uh, three and a half, I had castanets, the full outfit, the flamingo. I remember dancing and it was so, you know, this ecstasy of life flowing through me and through music and sound. And, um, yeah, and actually my mother was very interesting. She used to take us from um, different religions, Buddhism, meditation, uh, she was born a Jewess, but her father was an Irish Catholic. So we went through all the different flavours of 
religion and life. But I saw that there, I remember that that time, so a while ago, there was fighting between, um, in Ireland, between the Protestants and the Catholics. And I had never understood that. I, and I used to say to my mum, I want to build a church in the backyard where people of all religions could come and re remember that it has nothing to do with separation. It's got to do with connection and love and peace. So it was very deeply ingrained in me. And, you know, and, and this sense of connection also came from my father who spoke eight languages, my grandfather spoke 11. So we always had people of many cultures in our home. And I knew there was not one right way. Mm -hmm. Everything was interrelated. But during this time, uh, there, was a lot, there were traumatic events that interwoven those times. So by three and a half, four years old, the young teenage boy next door decided that my young body would be a fertile ground for him to explore his um, sexual you know, awakening. Um, and this was the beginning of probably the first aspect of Frozen. And the other side of it, I think it made me super vigilant, hyper vigilant. And I've seen this a lot with my clients that have had, you know, traumatic events that have really impacted them. There's either a deep freeze or a hyper vigilance that occurs. And in my case, it was a bit of both, but definitely hyper vigilance and extraordinary sensitivity that some would even call it psychic. So I could smell and see a person walking down the road that had been sexually abused. Wow. from a young age, and I could see someone who was an abuser. So I was very much on alert. So moving from that, that frozen to that fight, flight sort of um, uh, mechanism within my body. By the time I was 16, I uh, had a faith. I, I, I had my first um, opportunity to go on a date with a, um, a young man came my way. And he asked me on this date, and this voice inside my head screamed, no. But my ego body just said, yeah, date, fabulous, let's go have some fun. And I was like, mm, very you know, chuffed that he'd asked me. And unfortunately, that ended up being 18 months of a nightmare. Mm. And this guy was very unbalanced and had a fatal attraction uh, you know, I had a facial attraction experience with him. So you can think of every horrible event that could occur, life-threatening as well as, you know, physically damaging and abusive. That's what happened to me during that time. Mm. Uh, and it was relentless because every time he was taken to jail, his father was a billionaire and he would pay his way out and be on the street within three days. So I was never safe for that time. And how I survived that was as he was, would find me and like I'd be babysitting and he'd find, wherever I was, he'd find me. And he'd climb into the people's homes and he'd start ch choking me or put a knife to my throat. And as he was doing what he was doing to me, the only way I survived it, I knew with this personality that if I ever opposed him or fought him, he would follow through. Mm. So I learned to freeze. Mm. So this is where this freeze really started to set in. The other side of that is that it also propelled me on a journey of, of, of moving through the realms of different spiritual um, areas. And so by the time I was 17, going on 18, I had my first what I would call mini opening. And I remember all my girlfriends were going, friends were going off to schoolies to sex, drugs, rock and roll and alcohol. And at that point, I was a vegetarian. I was meditating. One of my party tricks was I could see inside your body and tell you everything that was wrong with you. I had these heightened sensitivities, like I'm talking about, this hypervigilance that opens doorways. And at this time, I took myself off to meditate and be at the beach by myself in a little camp caravan. And he had disappeared. So he was not in my sphere anymore. Was, I felt safe enough to be by myself. So he'd gone and moved two states away. 
So you took yourself off on a very different path there when people were going to schoolies and here you were, you'd become a vegetarian and started meditating. Was that as a result? What, what, how did you find that path of spirituality? Was it just a calling in you or was it a result mm. of the trauma that had happened? I'm just curious that you did, because that's a very divergent path for a, a younger yeah. person to, to go along. Yeah, I, 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 I don't know, just something inside me knew there was more. Um, you know, if, if I, I reflect back, you know, I was fascinated by yoga and I, I wanted to go and live in a yoga community. And I was, I was reading books like yoga, uh, Parahansa, Yogananda, you know, I was reading anything about consciousness. Mm. I was obsessed with consciousness and awakening. So you were and called so to it. You were I was called to it. There's no yeah. doubt about it. You know, it's, it's a memory. This is, this is a memory. Mm. And that's why nothing else has sufficed. You know, I've had many times of depression and my own PTSD. Nothing has, nothing else has sufficed. Awakening freedom has always been the journey. Yeah. How, yeah. how blessed you are from a young age to have really connected with that and to have that. And I understand what yeah. you're saying. is that voraciousness, that, that interest in the, in the path. And, and I moved away. Like I can say there were many phases in my life, Jim, where I do what I called the pendulum swing, mm. where I'd move from one to the other. I'd do fully in the world and mm. then I'd be fully out of the world, well, of the world but not, you know, in the world but not of the world. I'd be doing, you know, meditations and yearn and I'd be working in a very alternate way and then suddenly I'd go from that to being a jazz and Latin singer. You know, I'd be doing an acupuncturist and I was seeing some of these clients and I'd, I'd, I'd be seeing into what was happening for them at a very deep level. I could see their trauma and where it got stuck. Very young. But it was activating my own trauma. Right. So then I'd run away from that. So I'd do my own fight or flight because it was just too activating, and run away from that world, and I'd suddenly end up in another world. I never chose to be a jazz and Latin singer professionally. It just happened because someone heard me at an event and said, I think you should do this. And so every, I, I can see many times in my life, and the suffering that that created as I ran away from my own um, traumatic, traumatic events. Mm. How so, so it was both. I would have these amazing awakenings. Like at, I was saying, at 17, I became one with everything. Mm. You know, I'd have this opportunity of feeling everything, the stars, the moon, the sun, the sand, the ocean. There was no separation. And I knew this was true. And then from that, I'd go into these major trauma events. And so it was like, and this is the thing about trauma, is that it can be cyclic. Mm. And so it can move through you in different ways. So you have something that might have happened in May and then the next year it can happen in May mm -hmm. or two years later in May mm -hmm. or around that time, that April, May thing. So this is, this is what I kept doing, boom, boom, boom. And the true freedom is always in the centre. Mm -hmm. It's not avoiding this or grasping that. Mm -hmm. That just kept me in suffering. Mm -hmm. But in the midst of it, there'd be these openings that would occur and I'd be you know I, 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 you know moving from you know the acupuncture world where there was all these openings and all these awarenesses occurring running away from that as it got too close to my trauma and then going into the world of jazz and latin then from there going into the world of yoga because it was like I couldn't do the mainstream world for too long mm -hmm. it wasn't satisfying so there's always been this this pull, as you said, this pendulum swing between the two worlds, and then yeah. finally coming back. Well, it, so let's talk a bit about that. You 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 said you you know so you had that period of of you know vegetarianism and meditation at seventeen. Then you went was that uh, was it then after that that you went to the Latin singing or what happened in those sort well, of ensuing years? Okay, so before um, in my twenties I was an acupuncturist mm -hmm. and just a normal everyday acupuncturist, but I was meditating a lot. I had a very clean lifestyle. Um, and then one day this amazing man uh, came and uh, he trained with Tibetan monks in esoteric healing and meditation. And I don't, it's a big story how I came to meet him and he took me on as a student and then I opened, you know, and brought in a whole lot of people to his class, classes. And after his class, he, classes, he decided to, he was going on tour with his wife around the world to teach these things. Well, he left. And after he left, another opening occurred. 
And what happened was from going from a normal acupuncture clinic, suddenly all my needles were flying out of my clients and I could not do acupuncture on them. They weren't staying there and all these colours were flying out. And it was like he opened something in me. And then one day this voice, because I couldn't put needles into my clients anymore, I didn't know what to do. They were shooting and hitting across the wall. <laughs> and this male voice, similar to that no, came in and said, touch this point. And it was an acupuncture point. And I touched it with my finger on this client. And before I knew it, I had a technicolor video picture of the core event that created their condition. So their illness, they came for an illness, but the core event was a traumatic event. Wow. So I would really, because I didn't know what I was doing at all. I thought, Jesus, they must think I'm insane, you know. And I'd have them face down because I didn't want them to see that my needles were flying out. <laughs> they could hear it. But, and they, they, I'd tell them, I'd say, look, this is what I'm experiencing here is this is what I'm seeing. It was like, and they, they would have this huge catharsis on the table and say, you're right. That's exactly what happened to me. And the next thing, this voice would tell me to go to the next point, and I would see like this black energy move out of them. The client would have to be catharsis, and then they'd leave, and they'd feel fine. Well, my clinic went through the roof. Suddenly I was getting every trauma case, every abuse case coming out of everywhere. Now, at this point, amazing what the mind does, I had forgotten I'd been sexually abused as a child. Wow. Mm. So the more I was seeing clients coming in and I could see their technical video picture of them being abused, a lot of women coming through, could you imagine how it was activating inside mm -hmm. of me? And I couldn't get to this guy to ask him for help because it was when there was no emails, no mobile phones. He left for a year and he was coming back a year later and that's all I knew. I knew the countries he was going to. I didn't know how to connect with him in any way. Wow. I felt totally isolated. So it, it built up my own anxiety about my own trauma was building up in me and I couldn't do it anymore. So I ran away. I ran away and went and sailed with my dad on his boat in the wet Sundays. <laughs> and then after that, someone heard me sing about a, you know, a couple of months later, I was at a soiree and someone heard me sing and they said, I think you should do become a jazz and that singer. You know. But I felt like I chopped off my arm. Mm. I had this gift. It wasn't me. I was being guided. I was, whatever it was, was powerful for these people because they were walking away unencumbered from their trauma Absolutely. and their illness. And I'm going, okay. And I knew it was never me. I knew it. I was just a conduit. But so it was like when I walked away, I chopped off my arm, but mm -hmm. I couldn't not walk away. The trauma, the, the anxiety inside me was building. So it was many, about a couple of years later, I'm at the Pashna, which is, you know, where you go and do 10 days of meditation. And, in, and the first 10 days was fine, but I went back to Sydney to grab a girlfriend who I was really concerned about. She was doing very bad drugs and, and I thought, I'm taking her. So I took her back and I went back to do another 10 days immediately. Mm. And in that second 10 days, all the memories of the, other, the childhood sexual abuse came back. Wow. And... It, it really put me into a very frozen, traumatized state for a long time. Mm. Like I'm talking years. Yeah. yeah. And this is, and just to give people who are perhaps might not be yeah. aware of a Pashna, it's a 10 day silent meditation retreat. That's correct. Yeah. Yeah. It's very intense. I've done it as well. And it's, yeah. it's a very intense experience, particularly because you're sitting, you're not speaking to anyone for 10 days at all. Yes. And you're just there with yourself. So, okay. Alyssa, that would have been an incredibly frightening experience in some ways so totally. you went into this frozen state was there any help available to no you point? when I went to the, the the people and I said look I need help I'm I feel like someone's taken a knife and shoved it in my chest and I can't breathe oh. I recognized that probably what that was was his hand on my chest mm. as he was abusing me mm. and so I had full memory of going home and telling my mother and my grandmother was going hysterical and they're examining me and I remember all of that. And then, but the thing was I had no one to go to because, and then, try, then trying to sh sh shut me down because if my father had heard, he probably 
would have killed him. Right. And they were trying to save my father. Mm. So I was closed down, so that frozen, that closing down, not giving voice, mm. not giving us an opportunity to express these things that need to be acknowledged and heard and loved through. And so that, I could, the interesting thing about that, I couldn't check if it was true because both my mother and my grandmother were dead. Mm. So I, I tracked down a friend of my mother and I said, is this true? And she said, yes, that's true. That's what happened. Mm. So then still was not able to really process I wasn't really processing it that properly back then but then I went back to my well let's go back to freedom so I'll go you know after after <clears throat> all the singing stuff I think I need to go and live in a yoga ratio <laughs> let me get away from this world I need to go over there and process yeah. what you found in Vipassana too I'm yeah. assuming mm. yeah. and so um you know did the, the singing and then I went and became a yoga teacher and was very blessed to live in this beautiful yoga community and and had a lot of really profound experiences in my awareness of life and, and interconnectedness with all of life. Mm, wow. And it was a very powerful time, yeah. That's incredible. So you, yeah, pendulum, so you just, it's, it's interesting as you, these, you talk about these pendulum swings, it's, it's, it's each, each swing it's getting you perhaps a bit closer to the truth, but then it's that yeah. ability to, you know, to sit with these great truths and these great, and, and yeah. you know, these the the experience of these traumas and it's 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 such an incredibly powerful experience trauma and yeah. it's something that we do have to process we do have to allow to flow through us but we need support to do that don't we I don't I really don't think we can do it by ourselves there's certain layers of it yes but mm. when it becomes particularly that complex childhood trauma and embedded when it's embedded in the cellular memory it just and if you're not letting it flow through the system which most of us don't. And the way I describe it to my clients is what happens with this level of trauma and anxiety and depression is we go into a level of overwhelm. Mm. When you're in this level of overwhelm, when these thoughts or these things become reactivated, whether it's through depression or anxiety or an event that recreates it. So I'm just going to regress, go back a bit and just explain um, how I got thrown into years and years of PTSD. Mm, so here I was doing this boom, 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 mm. loved my yogic life. And then it seemed to be about a seven-year cycle and all these things, you know. But I was really loving my yogic life, had the best life. I was often going to India, sitting on sacred mountains, having profound experiences with the divine again inside of me. And then um, I met my now husband. And poor guy, it wasn't his fault, but days later... <laughs> The girl whose brother had sexually abused me as a child, and this is many states away from my original home where that happened, she walked into my yoga class. And as I'm sitting in meditation, I look up, and at that moment my knee snapped as I looked at her. Unbelievable. My knee snapped. And then I went into a whole life-death scenario things for years. That and another event, and I want to explain the other event because why I want to explain this is that we can be going along and having a fabulous life and all this stuff, and one small event can trigger off mm. all that trauma that has never really made its way through the system. You've done all this great work for years. Mm. And you've done the work, Alyssa. Yeah, believe me. Personal growth stuff like you wouldn't believe. You name mm. it, I've, you know, NLP, meditation, Kate, you know, Byron, Byron uh, what's her name? Byron Katie. Byron Katie, mm. um, you know, nine-step processing, journeying, you name it. <laughs> I was addicted to doing everything to create freedom in my life. But I was still trying to fix it mm. instead of allow it to move through me. That's a really profound moment. Yeah, That's a very so profound funny statement yeah. you've just made there yeah i think we need, need to really pause on that and it's this idea of fixing ourselves or allowing it to flow through yeah completely different you know completely different because fixing mm -hmm. implies an imperfection in ourselves but if we That's are it. who we say we are which is connected That's to it. source then we do not need any fixing That's it. but we are this human vessel that are needs yeah. needs to allow emotions and energies to flow through for, yeah. for health for our own our own human health that's it. So profound. Wow. 
and so and that event and another event where a beautiful Israeli friend of ours came to visit at the yoga community I lived in and she wanted to share her gift of this breathing technique and my intuition was doing that same don't do it really don't do it so for about the tenth time that she asked the community I went oh I'll go and just do it you know and I went and did it and as soon as I started I knew I should have done it so all this trauma started to arise and I rolled onto my stomach and for some mm -hmm. reason she hopped on my back. Uh. Now, as an adult, you know that you can work through things. But as an adult in trauma, if someone stops you and your thing has been that you can't protect yourself, that started, oh, over 10 years of PTSD. The combination of those two events, and I could not get her off. And I remember my brain, I, I remember this snap occurring inside of me and going, I can't protect myself. And up until then, I sort of had believed I could. That's, mm. that's how I'd got through life. Mm. But that thing started this PTS cycle that went every year. So I want to just go and go back to that overwhelm. When your neurological system is in fight, flight and frozen, and I think more people are in frozen than they realise. And I'll explain more about frozen to, and how we can move to freedom in a minute. But then when that overwhelm occurs, you can't think straight, you can't function properly, even just washing up can be hard. Um, you know, trying to maintain healthy relationships is difficult, um, trying to maintain a job and trying to maintain your health because there's a cascade of symptoms that occur with trauma. So here I've been flipped back into survival. So suddenly I move away from my yogic well, where my sanity is, because I'm back now in this extraordinary survival mode. How am I going to survive? I can't look after myself. Now, this isn't conscious. This is all unconsciously happening. So I won't go into the world of business to learn how to make money because you've got to learn how to survive. So if, you, if you're taken out and you're on crutches for three months, you can't do yoga classes, can you? I did, but you can't, you know. So I started to shift back in that pendulum swing from spirit back to the material. And in that, what started to happen as I moved away from my love, which is freedom, into the material to gain security, thinking that would give me the adult security, Mm. that actually very, had nothing external all very natural all, all very, very natural mm. and then what happened was and unbeknownst to me I didn't even realize I was an extreme PTSD mm. for over 10 years mm. but what my friends saw and what I saw over that time was this person that would come out and be alive and active and capable to be in the world and do these amazing things and go and be taken out for months at a time Mm. And normally around the same date. Mm. And so it then started to impact my health. So this is the thing when you're frozen. So I became more and more frozen. Mm. And because my system was never really coming out of fight, flight or frozen over that time, and I was underlying my, all of my, my actions were coming from this, from this reality of survival. What happens is, there's, it's, it becomes like a brick wall. You start with this frozen event and you don't know how to fix it. So you go looking for everyone to fix it, but it doesn't quite fix it. Then the next year, the next event comes in or the next week or the next, or the next overwhelm or the next stress layer, and this is what happens. It's not moving through. Mm. So you get this build-up of this thick layer of frozen until you're so ashamed you don't want your friends to know mm -hmm. anymore so you just hide away and you hide away and you only come out for them to see you when they when you think you're out of it for a certain period of time but yeah. in that then your body starts to deteriorate you cannot sustain that mm. so we see things like chronic fatigue we see things like digestive disorders we start to see things like um uh, you know, um, apart from the a mental, emotional depression and instability, then you start to see things like um, you might get autoimmune conditions, you might get um, 
you know, heart conditions, worst scenario, cancer, like life-threatening conditions as these cascade of symptoms occur. Because the body can't handle it anymore, can it? I no. mean, the body's just, the, I mean, I have such respect for our human bodies. You know, the, it's extraordinary. You know, the body is a temple, absolutely, but it can only withstand so much until it can only withstand so much yeah. until you actually can come around and have a look at this from another perspective so what happened how did you then so, pull yes. yourself out of this i mean well, we met during this time as well i was so. having yeah i was having the worst every year i was having mm. a major life-threatening event and and you know one of my things is i've been attacked in my home by this original person multiple times so guess what I recreated during that 10-year cycle? I had two home invasions. Wow. Now, I don't know anyone that's had that many attacks in their homes. It's ridiculous. I had every health condition you could. So I was, you know, about to go on tour singing. You know, I was going back to sing at the Bali Spirit Fest and I'd just been there creating all these CDs like because I was in my good part of the year and then I'd come back to Australia to get some things together, to go on tour, of, go back and do the Bali Spirit Fest and go on tour with my music. Embolism, blood clot, mm. life-threatening. Took me out for a year to recover. So each time, sometimes it would take me out for three months, sometimes it would take me out for six months. So each time, every year, it would just escalate mm. until I ended up with heart you know, mini heart attacks and, and every autoimmune condition you could just put under the sun. It was like I just kept going down this cascade of symptoms and scenarios. So these home invasions would occur. And the last one, it was so ridiculous what happened. And this person came in to attack me and I just went, okay, this is me. I have created all of this. Mm. I am a really powerful positive manifester, but I'm a really powerful negative manifester. And because the memory was stuck in my cellular structure, it wasn't me going out, I need this. It was stuck in my cellular structure. And because of this constant building of a wall and nothing moving through, it was escalating in its intensity mm. until this last person came in. And then I knew this was my creation. Mm. And I just want to pause this again there now because I think, again, this is a really key point of freedom is yeah. to, you know, something that I talk a lot about on this podcast is the fact that we are ultimately the creators of our reality. Now, this, this can be very confronting for people who've experienced trauma mm -hmm. and I've experienced trauma. You've obviously experienced significant trauma, and it's, you know, home invasions. It's very significant. But it is ultimately if we can come to that point of understanding that we are the creators of our situation, and this is where I had my breakthrough because my experience was with yeah. high-functioning anxiety, this is where I had my breakthrough as I realised, you know what, if I can be, as you, in your words, if I can be a very negative manifester in the space of anxiety, I can also be a very positive creator yeah. in turning that around. That's and that, exactly was my, right. that was my sort of breakthrough. And I, yeah. I'm hearing you had the same realisation. And yeah. what freedom is to actually get to that point of understanding yes. yeah. I can do, I can own it, I did it, I can own it, I can do something about it. That's so it. powerful. So powerful. And, you know, this was the last, the one, the home invasion before that, at the other place I was living, <laughs> was when my girl, I couldn't function afterwards. I was in extreme PTSD. And my girlfriend came and said, Alyssa, you've got PTSD. And I went, huh? And I'd had all these years of PTSD mm. experiences, but mm. it wasn't until she came and, yeah. and, 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 I was able to own it. Yep. Even the shame of it, the embarrassment of it, the the grief of it, that my healing started, mm. and that's when I started to retrain myself and mm. re and really educate. And I think this is a really important part of this, and I want to bring this across because it's when we start to educate ourselves, we can open the door to understanding and work on the shame, like beautiful Brene Brown that's given her gift to the world about shame. Mm. You know, you can read Peter Levine's work on waking the tiger and understanding what, how trauma affects us cyclic and actually start to nail it so it doesn't happen. Mm. So I, once I understood this stuff, this, this was the last one. And by then I'd already started retraining myself. And so I knew intimately that this was part of the cycle. Mm, mm. And, and that's what, when I, I went deeper. I love this. And what I also want to say too before we go on is that, 
in in getting that and strangely enough Alyssa I had exactly the same experience when when I was sort of when it was named as okay this is generalized anxiety disorder mm-hmm. yes there was like a and there is yeah. a shame to that there is yeah. a an awareness and awakening to that but yeah. I also in that moment and I'm hearing you did the same thing you don't then label yourself as that as a victim to that that's you actually thing. just went okay how do I educate myself to then find a trajectory out of this out of it, out of it. And, and, and find the right people finding the right people to help you that was essential because I went to all these people and I would say 98 percent were not right for me Mm. because my journey has always been one of awakening I'm not really interested in mainstream ways of doing things unless the person is really evolved in their consciousness Mm. of course just giving me technique I wasn't really excited so I was lucky enough to come across some extraordinary human beings that took me down that path through deep consciousness through my way. I just want to also go back a bit. In the midst of all of that health crisis and emotional crisis, there were magnificent awakenings because there was always a gift in trauma. Mm. And it is, for us, some of us, the pathway home to self. And I can honestly say that in the times when I was so sick that I couldn't even get off the floor to get a cold glass of water, and I would lie in my meditation room because that's all I could do. And I'd have these profound awakenings and awarenesses, you know, openings, I call them. They're not awake. Oh, openings. And one of them was, because I've always been someone that wants to be of service to humanity. Right? I always want to give back. That's been my... And part of that comes from the desire to be loved, the desire to be accepted, the, or, but also it comes from just because, you know, we're here to be connected, mm. here to help each other. Absolutely. So here I am lying on this floor. And I'm having these downloads from the universe. And and I I was in so much grief that I wasn't being of service that all I could do was look after me and I wasn't even able to do that. No. I was in so much grief that I was so disconnected from where I thought I needed to be, what I thought I I needed, like my my music, my healing work, my this, all these different things, my yoga, all of it, it wasn't there. It was all stripped away. And there's just this body on the ground. (laughs) thinking it was totally useless and of no service to anyone, let alone himself. And then I realised that I am love. Mm. I am light. I am not my body. That my body is just an instrument for the love and life that I am. Mm. And I looked at my, the situation and I said, I don't need to move anywhere. If I want to be of service, then I start here and now. And I allowed the love that poured through me in that moment and the light that poured through me in that moment to radiate beyond my small existence, beyond this small space of only looking, trying to look after me, my own survival. And I let it burst forth. And I realised that my job was to continue to love regardless of my incapacity. Mm. my capacity to to function in the normal way in the world Mm. and so from there I started in that journey to to just send love and light around the world all the time to all the people in need all my friends that I knew that were suffering all my community I live in an uh, eco village and the you know and and to my extended suburb to Australia to the world and I realized that I could do that every minute of every day. Mm. I could be who I am, regardless of my limitations in this physical body, regardless of the limitations of where my foggy mind was, regardless of the limitations of my belief in being a victim or whatever. Mm. And I remember I started the process of coming home to self. How beautiful. And how beautiful. We need to take a, a pause there to just... And there's a couple of things I guess I'd like to draw out of that that I see is that there's a couple of things that happened there. You were, you moved into total acceptance, which is actually a part of love. So surrender. Total acceptance of self, surrender, we call it whatever word we choose. But, yes, you yeah. surrendered to the self, surrendered to your complete situation. And when we something magical actually happens when we move into that state of acceptance or surrender because mm-hmm. all the resistance, that energy, that energy that the, the the energy that we might use right. to try to, to to push against to fix to come back to that notion we're actually we're actually letting the tide go out on the resistance and we're letting the love to actually fully flow in 
mm-hmm. which is really, really powerful. So that's one thing that you did. And then the second thing that you did was that you started looking beyond yourself back out into the world and to share love with the world. And I, I remember at the time you sharing this with me and what a, what, what a, what a gift to yourself, but what a gift to so many of us around you as well. In yeah, thank you. But I, I actually see that every, in a way that belief in that connection and I, I, like there's no separation between you doing it, me doing it. We're oh. all do, this is what we're here to do. I actually believe when people ask me what my job is, my answer has always been to love. Mm. everything else is superfluous they're just tools Mm. they're just tools but ultimately my job is for you to see that I see that you are so much more than your body Mm. that you are love that you are already whole you are already healed in the midst of the crisis in the midst of the pain and the suffering you already are here fully actualized in this moment absolutely so honestly i have these tools i use and they're very profound and beautiful but i think the greatest one is i recognize that everyone is their own healer Mm. and everyone is already whole Mm. and that's what i pray over people as soon Mm. as i see them as soon as i look at them because that's that's where what it's really about, isn't it? It's about helping helping us under helping people understand that we are perfection as we are right now, regardless of what the external externality looks yeah. like. That we're yeah. we're this fractal of source that's coming into a physical body to have an experience and to do the learning. I mean, I thought you know people often say to me, well, why is this happening or why am I having this experience? And I say it's because we've chosen at some level pre-birth or whatever to have an experience, to learn and expand. And, and this is a, a tool for learning. This, this trauma mm. is a tool for learning. So mm. how do you then, I mean, so obviously all of these experiences are informing this, this beautiful work that you're doing now. You've, you, would you like to talk to us a little bit about that? Sure. Sure. So as I started to open to understanding about PTSD and trauma, um, I was led, uh, I was actually on tour with, um, a beautiful sound healer called Sheldon Boulevard. And he kept saying to me, this, Alyssa, you have all these healing modalities that you've done over the years and you're not using them. Like you're an acupuncturist, you're not using it. And he said, I really think you should go and learn how to use acutonics or different, different I think the, way he, the one he uses is different to that. But similar sort of thing, using tuning forks on acupuncture points, which is no needles. And that was great because I was no longer registered as an acupuncturist, so I couldn't use needles, but I could absolutely use my Chinese medicine philosophy. And so I went and studied acutonics, and that started this, um, you know, I was already working in the world of sacred sound and music, and, uh, you know, I had these healing things that I worked with for many different, in different ways over the years. But this was like my world's colliding. Mm. Sound with Chinese medicine, with uh, awakening, <laughs> if that makes sense. So it's the most beautiful modality. I love using it. And I love using it in a way that takes people out of frozen and it does it very quickly. It takes them out of fight, flight and frozen in the most magnificent way. So when a client comes, I spend a lot of time with them in the first session, somewhere up to two, two and a half hours. And the reason is, first of all, I want them to know that they are fully heard, fully seen, fully acknowledged, and whatever story that they need to lay before me and share with me is fully held in love. Because often there's never been that space for people. So that's step one. And in that, often there's already an opening and an awareness that comes to them that starts what I call the, 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 the unseen, the stuff in between the lines that just needs to be slightly gently loved and pulled without re-traumatising the person. So you find that little thing that's holding the whole thing. Then I put them on the table and I give them an experience of acutonics. And the whole purpose of that first treatment from my perspective, and some acutonic practitioner might do this differently, but for me, is that this magnificent being in front of me who is already whole and healed in my eyes and already love in action in my eyes remembers that mm. because it's got to be their experience yeah. 
So very quickly, people have an experience of no mind and the overwhelm of the fight, flight and frozen starts to dissolve. Not fully yet, but it starts to. So it's the first time their central nervous system gets a break in a long time. Mm. And they can start to feel what it's like to feel connected again. You know, I have people get off the table after that first session and go, I feel reborn. Wow. I haven't felt connected like this. Or because that's all done in silence, by the way. I'm doing this stuff around them, but it's done in silence because we've spoken, that's mm. over. Now, silence is where the self resides. Mm. It isn't in the words and the story, and the it's in the deep internal knowingness inside, and that takes stillness and silence. And the sound frequencies of the tuning forks allows the, the body. Unbelievably so. Cellular regenerate reconnection and, yeah. and bring people into that state of calm where yeah. they can actually step out of fight or flight for the first time, perhaps in forever living memory. Sometimes de- decades, sometimes years, mm. whatever. And so then I'm, and then I work through over, it might be the first three sessions, I might use acutonics. And because it's very feminine, it's very gentle because you know this soul has this being not the soul but this being this person this body this physical body is often presenting with deep ill health issues and deep pain that that hasn't been held or loved you know and it needs gentleness so the first three sessions and each time there's a deeper unlocking a deeper unlocking and maybe a health issue we start to address as we get to the third one but first the unlocking has to occur so the body can naturally move back into its state of self-healing because i'm not a healer you are you're the healer of you i'm truly just a conduit for you to remember and for the body to remember remember its natural healing state because obviously if you're in fight flight or frozen you're you're not you're sim- you know your nervous system is not holding itself in the most optimal opportunity for health. Nice. So we bring the nervous system back into play. From there, I work with neurological organisational technique, and I would call this the masculine arm of, of uh, my toolkit. And by the way, I have a lot of other things in my toolkit, so I'm just giving you the two that we're talking about today. There's a lot of other things I work with. Um, and NIT came into my life after that last trauma event where I was, this person came into my home, the last one. And my husband was so worried about leaving me at home when he, and, you know, he didn't in the beginning, but he was so horrid. He put out a, a, a request for help from the community I'm living in that could people babysit me because I was like, I was terrified this person was going to come back and play out my negative nightmare, my negative nightmare further. Mm. And I was so sorry that he was a player in my play. I felt so much compassion for him. But I was still in that extreme, I could barely talk, I could barely walk, I was shaking from head to toe. One of the people from the community had just started studying this NIT and she said, I think I can help you. She came. I could barely get to the door to let her in. I was terrified when she came to my door. She put me on my table, my massage table, 20 minutes later from not being able to think, walk, talk, function, I was fully functional. And I I have to know this. Mm. I need to study this. This is the next step. And what it does, it works, it looks at the neural pathway, well, it's a systematic approach to bringing the body out of fight, flight, and frozen in relation to the stuck memories, in relation to the physical conditions that are occurring. Mm. Mm. So this was like, you know, this magical thing that walked into my life because I had experienced every physical breakdown of the body that you could experience right down to not being able to walk because I had hip problems, all stuck cellular memory in my body. And I didn't know how, like, you know, you go to this person for the autoimmune condition, you go to the osteopath, you go to the chiropractor, but this brought all of it together. Mm. So it was like this gift. So it systematically brings you back into your body in time and space. 
in relation to the beliefs that are causing you to be stuck. And it looks at cranial injury. It looks at, um, it looks at the limbic, limbic system. It looks at um, the cardiac system. It looks at a scoliosis. But in time and space, not just the physical scoliosis, but the scoliosis of when your body got stuck in that twisted position when an event occurred, mm -hmm. whether it be a car accident or whatever, mm -hmm. and how that then affects all the different endocrine systems. Mm -hmm. It's fascinating. It, like I can honestly tell you, before my NIT sessions, because of my trauma, which had put my brain into fog, I was highly dyslexic. There was no way I could have studied what I ended up studying. Is that right? I was in so much stress every time I went to study something. So by the time I got to study this, which was like a gift, one of the original students that had studied with this guy, Carl Ferrari, happened to come out of retirement to teach it. And it was starting in two weeks' time. Of course, Alyssa. Of course. The teacher, every time you've needed a new teacher for a new awakening, it's they've come in. They've come in. And so I go off and I study this NIT and I'm, totally blown away mm. it's addressing all the physical symptoms with the with the stuck cellular memory mm. in relation to the stuck cellular memory oh my god so the combination of the acutonics with this so someone might come in when we get to the nots part of it i might query them and say well, tell me you know really something that's got a lot of charge a belief structure you know like I'm not good enough is most, you know, it's a good place to start. Or every time my partner, mother, friend does this, I go into da, 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 da. And we'll write down these belief structures and I'll say, give me a charge out of 10 and they'll say normally 9, 10 out of 10. By the end of the first session, we're always under five. Wow. If not down to two, three or zero. Now, the interesting thing, when, it, when it's moved through, not only does it throw up your, um, open up your scalial physical structure, you feel all the space starting to happen inside that you didn't know was there, but they come back the next week and I go, so tell me about this. And they go, oh, it's so far back in the distance, I can't even grab hold of it. So it's, it's erased effectively. It's, it's, it's well, it may mean not fully in the beginning, first couple of sessions, but it gets to that point where it, it has no power over you. Because if you've got a 10 out of 10, that belief structure is your negative nightmare in actualization. Absolutely. And you're bringing it to life every day. So every day. What a powerful tool. What a powerful yeah. tool. And look at your journey, Alyssa, in mm -hmm. terms of how you've, you've had that pendulum swing all of this time, but you've you know you've swung now into would you feel you're now more in the center you know if we use oh that? for sure jen i i live from the center in the past the way i would see it is i was moving life pushing to fix myself pushing to be seen on the stage pushing to be acknowledged as this pushing to be valued pushing to be loved, whatever the push was pushing to be have purpose pushing to be enlightened okay mm -hmm. i was trying to control move life Life took me out. Mm. I was taken out because I got, was, my ego was big and it was in the way. It needed to be taken out and I wouldn't want anyone to do it that way, but there are much nicer ways to do it, more gracious. In that, there was great learning. And now I'm in total gratitude for every part of my journey, mm. regardless of how painful it was at those times, the number of times I wanted to die, the number of times I nearly died, my near-death experiences were ridiculous. So, but the, now life moves me. Mm -hmm. I don't move life anymore, Jane. Mm. It comes from behind. I don't have to think about the next thing. It puts me exactly where I'm meant to be, when I'm meant to be there. Mm. Sure, my personality arises. It does its thing. Sometimes I have fear. Sometimes I have it's still depression or whatever it might be, grief or whatever. You know, like last year I had three family members die and two friends. Huge year of grief. But what great growth in the grief. Mm. What awakenings, what letting go in the grief. So everything has its is its doorway to awakening. 
to its doorway to it's a doorway to freedom so now as these things arise they don't do this anymore mm. my body and my system aren't taken out my mind isn't taken out my central nervous system isn't taken out this is what happens the grief comes in it comes through it gives me awarenesses of things that still need to be healed and and seen and loved and actualized and it moves through and mm -hmm. in that it leaves this magnificent frequency of wholeness mm -hmm. and, and and of freedom and awareness total awareness so i this is where i sit sure every now and then i do my little pendulum swing we're human beings living from this physical body but I'm, when i awake in the morning i say to myself none of this is real mm -hmm. Everything is a manifestation of my mind. And this too is impermanent and not real. But who I am is eternal. Mm -hmm. This personality is the vehicle through which I happen to express these gifts, these tools in this lifetime. Mm -hmm. But it has nothing to do with my essential nature. Mm -hmm. And that's where my freedom resides. Alyssa, it's just incredible what you've shared with us in terms of your, your overall journey and how congratulations to you for arriving where you've arrived right now. I mean, this is a, a lifetime of, of work and realisation and awareness. And if we think back to that, you know, the beautiful three or four-year-old girl singing on her swing to nature with the jet black hair mm -hmm. and all of the experiences that you've had and, you know, some magnificent and some very traumatic how you've managed to really come to an incredible understanding where you wove in together so many of these awarenesses to then now really be of service and to help so many people, which you are doing in your practice. So I just want to really congratulate you for that. Thanks, Jim. You know, and, and also this, you know, this beautiful awareness that you're sharing with us about not trying to push life, not trying to fix things, but actually allowing life to move us, allowing the divine really to, to move through us. Mm which is which is such a it's it's such a powerful way to live and it's mm. uh, it's a much more fulfilling way to live i think as yeah. well isn't it yeah and it's less of the swing of grasping for ecstasy or mm. and or trying to push away pain it it really is in the center i call it a gentle joy mm. it's like a, a non-stop gentle joy mm. it's not over the top it's not you know sure it's blissful at times but it's just this loving kind gentle joy mm, it is it's a really beautiful way to live and and i agree with you and it's and it's available to all of us i think this is the thing all of us all of us if we this is, this is our journey that's it this is our journey and this again this other point that i think that you've raised within our with our beautiful conversation today is this idea of the fact that we are actually perfect as we are we are we are we are souls living a human experience but we're still per perfect it doesn't matter what the physical body is going through there is still a perfection mm -hmm. here and as you've said it's just our job to remember this and your job to facilitate the healing for for some who've had very deep trauma which yeah. you know because it's easy to forget when you're frozen mm. It feels like all the cells are filled with all the pain and there's no place for God. Mm. God is all it is, and yet there always is. Mm. There's always a crack inside. There's always that divine light in you. It's never gone. Mm. But we can, get, we can forget. I remember there's this beautiful book I loved um, many years ago. I read. It was called Awakening. I can't remember the name of the priest that wrote it, but he was living in India. And he said, Bef before I was enlightened, I was depressed. After I was enlightened, I was depressed, but who cares? <laughs> and we have these concepts that it has to be perfect. Yeah. It's not perfect. It's full of imperfection because we're impermanent. Mm. Mm. This body is falling. This, this mind, thank God, is falling. Mm. You know, And I don't mean dementia, I'm talking about the beliefs, the structures, the concepts, they're falling. Thank God so we can live from our essential nature, the gentle joy, the love that we are. Absolutely. Absolutely. I completely agree. And, and understanding, as you said earlier, that it, it's, it's about coming to that gentle joy and just accepting and understanding we're going to have day, we could have moments of depression, we're going to have high, mm. feelings of high, great joy, but feelings of great sadness. And, and you've yeah. mentioned 
losing grief, having going through the grief process last year, I've, I've had a similar experience and yes. it's just about flowing, flowing through all of it. So I want to say thank you so much for being with us today. And we're going to put some links in the show notes um, to this podcast to some of your beautiful music. Thanks. But if people want to get in contact with you, how are they best to, to connect with you? Well, because I'm not really a social media, um, I'm not very good at all that sort of stuff. I um, Basically, it's all word of mouth. But I do have a website and I do have a phone number on that website. Um, and uh, I've never advertised. Right. I don't believe in it because I believe that whoever arises is, and whoever arrives here is the right person and that's that we have come together to to create healing mm. yeah. so what is that website address so that those oh people... well you can find me on www.alissa a l i s a nathaniel n a t h a n i e l dot com beautiful and so it's probably best that you ring me. There's a phone number there. I'm not very good with emails and things, but phone calls, I definitely get back to people. I'm less techie. I'm not. <laughs> oh, that's great. Well, it's wonderful. We'll put a connection to you in, in the show notes. And we're just, I just want to say thank you so much, Alyssa, for such a beautiful conversation today and for sharing so much of yourself and your journey, because I think we can get to really understand you know, clearly you've found freedom within yourself. You've found, found this beautiful, gentle joy and, and also incredibly enriching and fulfilling work that you're now doing, helping others find that freedom. So yeah. I want to congratulate you and thank you so much for your time and sharing of your heart with us because when we're sharing from our heart, we just, we just are able to go so much to the next level and get to know you so much more. So thank you. really. Thank you, Jen. And I absolutely adore you and love you. And from day one, from the day that I first met you, your soul, your light, your radiance and what you offer to the world, I'm in absolute gratitude. Thank you, my darling. Oh, thank you, my beautiful. I look forward to talking <laughs> to you very soon. Okay. Thank Big you. Kisses. Big kisses. Thank you for joining me on this episode of Your Freedom Unlimited. If you like this show, please share it with a friend. And if you haven't already, subscribe, rate and review Your Freedom Unlimited on your favourite podcast player. If you have any questions, comments or feedback, you can reach me directly at jenramsey.com. Thanks for listening. 